And mm. um, like you, you look at Tony Abbott, he's got his Twitter followers, he's only got 12,000. Uh, Julia Gillard's got 25,000. Yeah. Likes on Facebook for Tony Abbott, you've got 8,000. And likes on uh, Facebook for Julia Gillard, you've got 35,000. I mean, that's a skewed skewed sample size. I mean, because they, they, like, Julie Gillard's winning. Like, I mean, what poll. do you mean sample size? Well, because, I mean, that's, like, you've got 8,000, you've got 35,000 there, but obviously, I think more oh, you think younger you know, people use tech, and I think younger people are more inclined to vote for Labour. Uh, and, and older people are liberal. Yeah. Because they say it's the more conservative party now. Yeah. Even though they're both on the conservative... Oh, very much so. Well, that's where you see the, the Greens. The, the Greens points. are just going crazy with this because they're like, you know, the yeah. third party getting this stuff. Well, yeah, go the, down the bottom, what was it like? Yeah, here we go. The internet at the moment, he, he's... The um, swing is the best for yeah, the like Greens, the third 31 party. 31 points to Brown and Gillard yeah. is like 15. So, See, I mean, if we did actually start basing electoral results off this, we'd think Brown would start yeah. win. I mean, it, it's definitely going to go that way, but at the moment, it's still going to be a while, but... I can't wait that, like, if they're doing this the Australian election, like, and that's where you don't get much money, it, like, goes for five weeks, it's really short, I'm sure it's going to be, like, the American one. I mean, <laughs> oh, last the next time one. they spent a billion yeah. dollars all together. Well, I have a feeling Obama won it on social media. I think he did, he did pretty like, pretty much. He was the top on Twitter for Probably 60% time. of his campaign, 67% was won off social media. Well, there's a lot of the young people, you know, mm-hmm. hope. Hope can change. Now, uh, now our things are what, going, moving Australia forward. Yeah. Mofos. Very odd. <laughs> anyway, what's uh, your story? Um, it's about 3D printing. There's this company called Shapeways. I believe they're in the States. Shapeways. Shape. Ways. Oh, shape. Like oh, shape. Like oh, shape. Shaking. Yeah. Um, and essentially all they are is you can basically, using any 3D modeling program, you create what you want, you upload it to their site, they, you know, you choose what material you want, what color you want, and all yeah. that. They'll print it out using um, like high-end three D printers, like not your crappy little home-based stuff that you can get. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you order it, and they send it to you. Sweet. Like <laughs> that. That's pretty amazing. I, and, and we've been thinking, <laughs> we've been thinking this is probably the way it will go um, to begin with. Like, you you can get thousand dollar three D printers now, like the MakerBot. I love that. I love that project. It's open source, but it doesn't do anywhere near the, the quality that you kind of want. Like, he can do yeah. gimmicky little things. But these guys do a lot better quality because I'm guessing... It's mis- still just all plastic though, right? Yeah, it's all plastic. You can print with three uh, with stainless steel, but I don't know if Ooh. these guys do it yet. Uh-huh. Um, but, I mean, the machines that they use are like, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm guessing. Yeah. Like, high-quality machines. Um, but, yeah, uh, eventually, like, I, I, I can see there being um, 3D printing, I guess, warehouses, like, in every major, every yeah. major city. And then you just order well, just a cool then... distribution network that like yeah, say all in China and then just they they've got their things just to ship over here and yeah. stuff. Well, this is what these guys are kind of doing. They got yeah. a, got a little community going on. Um, it's pretty they're just sweet. small, but they're like you, know, you can make your own little gadgets and things. Well, because that's it. This is like a lot of people tend to compare like three D printers to normal printers and saying that well, I don't think factories will happen and stuff because oh, because you could just print it out. That that printers themselves don't work that way. Yeah. But I think that was because there's only so much you can do like with a normal printer. Like first yeah. start off with black it's, it's and white pretty slow. Scale. Yeah, that's it. Whereas with 3D printing, there's a lot of innovation still left to go. Like at the moment with plastic yeah. and all of that, it's great. And so you'll always still have probably the big factories for at least the facility. Yeah, or for, the, for big things. Like you're not going to be printing out a car in your, not yet, in your yeah. living room for a long time. But see, probably it. like in, in a little while that you, you actually will be. That'll be done in factories yeah. and stuff. It'll be more, instead of like, you know, the assembly line, you've already got robots building and stuff, but yeah. it'll be a universal construction. Well, uh, I like the idea of, um, for example, something a, a product like the iPad, which everyone knows. Imagine if Apple could pretty much design their product and just with a click of a button actually print it simultaneously yeah. around the world. Like rather than actually focusing all their manufacturing in one particular factory where they have to yeah. redesign everything to be suited for so it. That's that's the yeah. awesome end game. Because then you have worldwide releases at the same time, which yeah. is what people would love. Which and I guess kind reduces of reduces your shipping costs too. Yeah, well, which leads into our singularity topic for the week. Yay. Yeah. Well, also you can also print out houses now too. Three D printing. Oh with, yeah, yeah. With concrete. With concrete. Yeah. yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. Well, our, our uh, singularity topic for the week is pretty much uh, is three D printing in the way of uh, a lot of people speak about nanotechnology and nanites and constructing stuff out of air. Yeah. And so uh, we thought we'd uh, talk about that for a bit. Stuff out of air. It's true. Well. Maybe not actual air, <laughs> but they've got little bugs in them. So what's, what's our thoughts on... Uh, well, we should just extend on from here. Like, just extend on. I think we will. Like 3D, 3D printing, uh, we think 3D... Is the beginning. Is the beginning of, yeah, nanotechnology. Yeah, it's going to get more and more. Yeah. 
But like it sure it hasn't been combined too much mm. yet. Well, like you've I got, can't really know, but yeah. Yeah. Like you've already got nanotech going pretty strong in, in the labs and in yeah. research and all that. Well, pay, like that that's big. But I think this this economic sort of model will push it towards that. Yeah. Because you start with uh, printing, you know, um, plastic, which they're doing now, and then you'll, you'll, they've already got stainless steel. Next thing you would have circuitry. Once you print yeah. circuitry, then you can make most of your consumer goods yeah. with plastic. Well, there's going to be a lot mm-hmm. of stuff that it will be interesting to see what they can print and can't print because they're going to be the obstacles to overcome. I think this is going to be very interesting to watch the same way that like watching computers grow like when we were kids and all of that, yeah. that soon they'll be able to like, oh, then be able to print this and then they'll be able to print this material and then be able to print this material until it gets more and more and more and more till... Yeah. Like your iPad example, you can just print an iPad right there. Yeah. And then I guess that's where the, the nanites and nanotechnology well, yeah, well, takes over. Well, you do like a Moore's Law type thing. You want to print smaller and smaller and, until yeah. you could like theoretically print just atoms. Yeah. Well, but yeah, see, arrange to, atoms. Yeah, yeah well, to be able to do that, you kind of need bots to rearrange them. Otherwise, yeah. it becomes very inefficient. And well, there was a cool slow. example that I heard that I was, um, I was reading about this earlier today hmm. that um, a good way to think of it like of nanites and all that, like everyone has this weird idea and stuff, but just think of a, uh, a, a ball with an arm on it that can like pick up stuff. And I think that's the, the best way to think of like nanites because it's just like, it's picking up something, moving it and putting it somewhere else. And then you think yeah. of that with atoms or probably not atoms, probably more molecules. I mean, I, I think atoms, are, I don't think that's going to happen at all. Yeah. For a very long, I don't know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I say for a very long time, but then you get the exponential growth and then it's like a, but I, I think molecules are going to be the big part for a while. And it's like, yeah, thing with an arm. Well, they've, already, they've already got the theoretical models of it all. Yeah, they made a motor. On, yeah, on, because they, they actually know all the different um, electrical impulses and how different atoms interact with each other. So yeah. it's a matter of just simulating that, putting it together, and they can work out that if we, okay, if we can put this item here and this item like this, then yeah. they'll do this. Well, and we did, with, we did before about like transistors yet. and stuff. They, they did a small transistor with a yeah. few atoms. I remember a story about that. And the, the thing is, it just... You can't, from that level, you can't do a top-down ordering. Mm. It has to be a self-organizing system. Well, see, so that's where it comes down to, that it's kind of like you've got these nano, like, say, like a nanite cloud or something. I don't like the word nanites, but I'm just going to use it. It's, I'm not a fan. Sounds like injecting a nickel. <laughs> yeah, you, you, there's a lot of baggage with that word, I yeah. guess you could say. <laughs> but uh, when, I, when I say nano, it's like something that can, you can rearrange from it, like going from 3D printers all the way into the home, and then it's just like smaller and smaller and smaller until you say, oh, I would like this created... And it's created in a cloud when I said from air. Mm. So what is the societal implica- implications? Implications. That? <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that's big. Well, it's very difficult to. I'll just go. Back. It's very difficult to predict how it's actually going to happen. Oh yeah. Like how can we actually use nanotechnology to arrange things? Oh yeah. But I mean, there's that brilliant uh, Richard Feynman quote where you know he see there's no uh, laws in physics against being able to arrange, arrange things atom by atom. Yeah. And when you understand that, that it's kind of cool. So it, it's going to happen at some points. Yeah. 